on to the next topic. So one of the coolest things about PHP is that it's, a, it's actually a multi-paradigm programming language. And so today we, have, uh, we are so lucky to have Freck van der Horten here, who is going to talk about functional programming with PHP. Now, disclaimer, I don't think there are going to be any monads in the <laughs> talk, right? So yeah, <laughs> give it a round of applause for Freck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I hope that you enjoyed uh, lunch. This is a I, this is a very grateful spot for the conference. I think to give a talk because your belly is full and you now keep on sitting. So that's uh, that's pretty good. Um, now I want to uh, say something about my talk. We're not going to talk about functional programming, but we're going to talk uh, about awesome things that you can do with PHP and some functions that you uh, don't uh, don't know yet, probably. So I'm Freek van der Herte. I'm a developer at a Belgian company uh, called Spasi. Uh, like many of you, I'm on Twitter. My handle is Freek Merze. That's the only time that I'm going to steer you towards Twitter. Uh, I'm not uh, like Gary, like Twitch, Twitch, uh, follow me on Twitch and stuff. Uh, I have a blog, uh, freek.dev, where I talk about modern PHP development and, uh, and Laravel. Uh, I've written a uh, uptime monitoring application called Oh Dear App, and this one doesn't only scan your homepage, but it will actually crawl your entire website and tell you when there's anything wrong with any of the pages. And together with my colleagues at Spassi, I've also made Flare, which is an exception tracker, especially for Laravel applications. Now, before heading into the talk, I want to say a few words about our open source efforts that we do at Spassi. We've currently uh, 300 packages registered on Packagist. Uh, they have been downloaded for 280 million times, and they are being downloaded for 18 million times a month. Uh, and if you know that our team is less than 10, 10 people, uh, then yeah, I hope that you agree that we are we can be uh, proud of this. It's a big list of packages that we've made. Most of them are Laravel specific, but there are a few PHP agnostic ones uh, there as well on our company website entirely free there's a special license on them called postcardware which means that if you use any of our code in your production environment you are required by law to send us a postcard now i'm currently missing 270 million postcards so uh, keep them keep them coming the one that do get to our office we publish them on our virtual uh, postcard wall so you can enjoy them too with that uh, out of the way, talk a little bit about PHP. Now, let's do maybe a, a hands up first. Who here loves programming with PHP? Okay, a lot of people. Is there somebody not? No, I think everybody put uh, put their hand up. So PHP, you. Every once in a while, you get somebody that writes, "Hey, PHP is dead." But I think if you say that nowadays that that PHP is that you haven't really paid attention because it's a really great language. And there are also blog articles about um, uh, how many percentage of PHP is powered, uh, that it powers the web. Some say 70, some say 80. That doesn't matter. It's a big percentage. And we have amazing new features that are being added every year. Here is uh, some of them. We have native enums, short closure. We have some new oper typed properties, property promotion. And yeah, every year we get uh, new stuff. And uh, we've also seen massive performance improvements coming from PHP 5 to PHP 7, and then again from PHP 7 to 8. Now, what makes PHP very enjoyable is not only the language itself, but also the entire ecosystem. And we are blessed with a fantastic uh, dependency manager called Composer, which uh, you probably all, uh, all know. And it allows you to easily pull in third-party code. And this has resulted in a massive amount of packages being, uh, being published. So these are um, some statistics that I uh, pulled off uh, Packagist this morning. And in total, we have downloaded uh, 58 billion uh, packages. So yeah, everybody is doing this, and we have 
a great uh, number of downloads, but also the number of packages uh, is, uh, is pretty awesome. There are 340,000 uh, packages registered, and not only that number is important, but you see these graphs uh, going up. So PHP is really in a very uh, good position. Uh, I think PHP is a very flexible language, and um, it's also yeah, influenced by other ecosystems. We shouldn't think that we've invented it all uh, by ourselves. I think if we um, want to keep the PHP ecosystem healthy, we need to yeah, think out of the box and always see what other people are doing too. And in this talk, I want to show you a few surprising ways that we can use PHP. And I also want to show you some cool uh, community projects that were influenced by things outside of PHP. Um, these are the things uh, that I want to talk about. I don't know if we are going to have uh, time uh, for them all. Let me start also my little clock here. Um, but we're going to try. So. First up, we are going to talk about uh, something called Invade. And uh, don't uh, read too much in the name. This was named before uh, those horrible events uh, in Ukraine uh, started. Um, so I don't know if you know this, but in Python, they don't have any private uh, or protected stuff at all. Everything is, uh, is public. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun to see yeah, how it could look like if we could just read private properties in, uh, in PHP? And I've made a, a little package uh, for that. So let's try it out. So here we have uh, a class. And you can see that there's a private property. Uh, this is a secret. And we also have like a secret result here. Um, I'm during this talk, I'm also going to use a little tool here called Ray. And it's just a little debug helper. Everything that gets sent to the Ray function will be, uh, will be displayed there. Um, OK, so let's try to um, get this private property. So we're also here in a command, which I can just invoke here on the command line. So let's invoke this piece of code. We're going to create a class. We're going to get the private property out of it and display it in Ray. And of course, that doesn't work because we can't access a private property. Now, how can we solve this? We can just invade this. And let's try it again. And now we have this as a secret. So that, that just works. That's how easy it is to get uh, private properties. And this also works for, uh, for methods. So if I want to um, call my uh, private method on that. Let's maybe first try without the, uh, the invade. Let's do this. Then yeah, we can't call a private method. But of course, whenever we use invade here, then we can get to the secret result, which is returned by that private method. So it's that easy to uh, use private, uh, private properties. Now, how does this work uh, behind the scenes? Let's take a look at the, uh, the, function, the, uh, the function here. So we pass our object to invade. Then we give our object to a class called invader. And on that invader class, we immediately uh, put the reflection information in a property called, reflect called reflected. And whenever somebody tries to get a uh, property of the invader, and the invader doesn't have yeah, too much properties, um, then it will go to our reflection class. It will set that property to be publicly accessible, and then we'll get the method. That's basically how it works. And for setting and calling functions, it works more or less the same. So it just relies on. Um, uh, the reflection abilities from PHP itself, but uh, it's packaged up in a uh, nice function that you can use like this. Now, should you use this? <laughs> Probably not. In most cases, you don't want to use this. Maybe in testing or some special kind of tooling, even for testing, you probably want to refactor some things so things are easily testable without this kind of magic. But I think it's cool that reflection in PHP exists and it unlocks 
uh, all kinds of, uh, of nice things. So if you need uh, to use this uh, invade function, I've put it in a repo on GitHub. Okay, next up, fork. So let's talk a little bit about concurrency in PHP. Um, probably for the most of the stuff that you work on, you create uh, scripts and they usually run from the beginning to the end. But in other languages, this isn't always the case. In JavaScript, a lot of things happen asynchronously. So let's take a look at how we can do this in PHP. And actually in PHP, we already have a lot of options. There are a couple of big frameworks, such as MPHP. You can see uh, that we can uh, create a promise and do things in parallel. We also have um, React PHP, which allows you to define a loop. You can add things to the loop and say when these things need to be executed and then run the loop. But those things hide a lot of magic away from you. They're uh, amazing to use, and if you, you want to use concurrency, definitely use it. Um, but I want to show you how it could work under the hood. I'm going to show you a technique that's not used by uh, these frameworks, but the most easy way uh, to, get, uh, to get this uh, started. Okay, it's again demo time. I have a set of commands here to show you some things, and let's clear Ray out here. So, I have another command here, fork1. Let's go to the logic. It's not too much. So, I guess that everybody has seen the matrix here. And in the matrix, you have to make a choice. Are you going to take the blue pill or are you going to take the red pill? If you uh, are taking the blue pill, then we are going to send that to Ray and even color the message blue. And otherwise, uh, it will be red. So, let's execute this and see what happens. So, fork one. You have taken the blue pill. Yeah, that's, I guess, normal because take the blue pill was true. Okay, now let's set this one to false and see what happens. No surprises there. You've taken the, the red pill. But what if I told you that you don't have to make the choice? You can take both pills if you want this. My question to you is, do you know of a function that will actually execute the if branch and the else branch? There is a function to do that. It will blow your mind maybe a little bit. <laughs> Let me show you. <coughs> so that function is called fork. And it's uh, a member of the process control uh, functions. I'm going to talk a little bit about that later. So let's execute this now. Now you have taken the blue pill and the red pill at the same time. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so how does this, uh, this kind of trickery work? So this, this, this actually works just for showmanship. Let's do it again. Yeah, I've again taken, taken the blue pills. Well, how this works is that at this point, you are really forking uh, the process. So uh, you have like the original process, which we call the parent process. And then we have a child uh, process. That's the new process that's being created. And what process control fork will do is uh, it will um, return the original process number for the parent. But if you're the child process, then that function returns zero. So basically, we are, have two processes here that, um, that are executing. So if I put here maybe uh, Ray process ended and run this thing again. Uh, I lost my ability to type here. Let's try here another one. Yeah, fork one. Then you can see that we have two times process ended. So we have a child process and we have a, have a parent process. Okay, let's build a little bit uh, on this. Oh, mate, I should, uh, should talk a little bit about the process control functions first. Is this available on your PHP system? Probably it is. This is an extension to, uh, to PHP, which is available in 
uh, most uh, distributions. Okay, fork two. Let's build a little bit on it. So, what I've shown you in the previous example is that we just spawn a process, um, and those were running at the same time. But probably you want to let your parent process wait a little bit until all the children are complete, so that the children can do some work, and that in the parent you can just combine all work that the children have done. Now, I've already uh, told you that the child process is the one where process ID is zero. So if that's the case, then we are going to do this. We are going to yeah, simulate that we're working on something. We're basically just sleeping. And at the end, then we are finished. And I've put all of the child messages in green. So everything that's uh, in red that is green is from the child. And then we exit out because then our child is ready. So here we are back in the parent process, and here we should detect if uh, the process ID is actually finished, finished. And how we do that is with another process control uh, function, namely uh, wait on the, on the process ID. And there is a uh, little flag here, uh, no hang, which means that if the process is still running, don't wait for it here, just, just continue. What we are going to do, if it isn't finished yet, then we are going to sleep. In red, we are going to say, in Ray, we're still sleeping in the parent. And when we're done, then we have finished, and that will be in blue. So let's try that and see if we can wait until the, the child is, uh, is finished. So let's run fork. So the child starts working. We're sleeping in the parent. We're waiting until the, the, the child is, is complete, still sleeping. Still sleeping, should be done, yeah. The child has finished, we've slept one more time here, and the parent finishes. So we can now wait on a child in the parent using that uh, wait ID function. Okay, let's build on it still. How are we going to get results from the child back to the parent? How can we communicate uh, between processes? Well, there is also a functionality uh, for that. And uh, that's done uh, via sockets. And PHP also has functions for that. So basically how a socket work, works is that you have uh, s uh, a variable where you can put stuff in, and then it comes out uh, at the other stuff. So if we create a socket pair, and this is one of those old functions where uh, it gets this uh, by reference and it will, um, yeah, uh, adapt something here, it, it doesn't return something, but here the sockets will be created. We are going to destructure structure them here, socket to parent, socket to child. If you are in the child process, we are going to immediately close the socket to the child, since that we are the child. And in the parent process, we are going to close the socket to the parent, because we are the parent. And there is also another function in here called socket write. And we are going to write to the socket towards the parent. We are going to pass on the string result from child. And in the parent process, we are going to read from the socket. So we are going to read from the socket to the child. We get the result here. And in our parent process, we get our result. So let's see if, uh, if that all works. So let's take a look at Ray here. And... Let's run fork number three. The child starts working. We're sleeping in the parent. And at the end, this will get written in the socket. And the parent will read it from the socket. And you can see here result from uh, the child here uh, being printed uh, towards Ray. So we were successfully passing a message from the child process to the parent process. OK, I think those functions there are not too much much functions really, but um, and it's nice that PHP uh, offers those, but you don't want to write this code by hand. So I wrote something uh, that's called uh, called fork. And, um, with fork, you can just new up a fork, and you just give it some callables. Behind the scenes, we will uh, run. Uh, the process control functions and all that uh, socket magic for you. If I uh, take a look at the uh, 
uh, source code of fork here, and I would uh, think fork. Then you can see that yeah, those functions are really being uh, used by the package. That's that's the basis. Okay, let's see uh, if it actually works. So we are going to give it five callables that um, uh, will execute sleep, and in sleep we will send to Ray if we're sleeping, we're going to sleep, and we're also going to show you something when waking up. And what you're going to see is that after five seconds, all of them will be done. It's not that we will wait one second and then start that one, then start that one. No, they will all start at the same time. So let's try it. So fork number four. They've all started at the same time, and now they uh, are all waking up again. So these uh, closures, they are all executed at the same time. Now, uh, I... I yeah, I'm going to show it. I'm going to show it. This is something that uh, I came up with um, when I was practicing this talk. It's, it's something really silly, but maybe, maybe you'll like it. So, um, let's give seconds here to Ray and maybe change up these numbers a little bit. One, maybe five, and four. Yeah, cool. Okay. Let's run this fork and see what happens. We get number one, we get number four, and we've basically built like the world's worst sorting function. So these come out sorting. It's the, also the easiest implementation. There's just one line. But I wouldn't use it in production. This is like a, a bad thing uh, to use for, uh, for concurrency, but, but it works. <laughs> okay. So, concurrency in PHP, it is possible. We have a couple of uh, nice frameworks for that. And truth be told, if you want to make something sizable, use something like uh, React PHP or MPHP. But if you want to reach for like a lightweight solution for something very simple, um, you could consider uh, using our fork package. Okay, let me check uh, the time. And we're still good. Okay. Um, let me show you uh, something cool that you might not know about uh, PHP uh, as well, and that is called uh, something called yeah global. So I've shown you that little uh, ray function where I can send something to uh, to this window. Um, this is what I use to debug uh, the whole time, and how it works is that. Uh, I've installed a package in this uh, program that provides me the Ray function. But something that uh, really bothered me is that in uh, normal scripts uh, that are without a framework, or maybe uh, WordPress where um, you can't just use a composer package, you can if you were a little bit... Uh, uh, experienced with that, but uh, for me it was was hard to do. Then you, yeah, you can't use like the Ray function because there's there's no package, there's there's nothing here. So if I run this 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 little code here, then you can see call to undefined uh, function Ray. Now I've solved this solved this uh, with a package called Global Ray. And I've uh, already in installed the package itself for you. It installs like a, uh, a, a global program. So if I now type uh, global ray install here, and I say, yeah, it's install it globally for me. Yeah, use this, happy debugging, good. And if I execute this then, then you can see that we now have that ray function working, even though I didn't include any autoloader or, or anything uh, here. Where does this function now come from? Well, let's take a look at our php.ini file. And I'm using this one. Uh, let's open it up. Ooh, I did uh, close it uh, in the wrong way previously. And let's uh, look for prepend here. Uh, pre, oh, I can't type anymore. Is it the nerves? Ah, here it is. 
So what that little uh, global installer for me just did was uh, putting something here in the auto prepend file directive. And you can see that it points to a file that is now um, in the global uh, ray package. And anything you put in auto prepend file here, any PHP script you put in here, will actually be executed before your actual script is executed. So you can use that to define anything you want before your actual script uh, is being run. And this can be, be very handy. Um, that global Ray package not only uh, exposes the Ray function, but also uh, Symfony's dump helper. So you can use dump everywhere, also in your, your one-off scripts, or uh, the DD function, which is basically dumping and dying. So that's uh, how that works. That's also something that a couple of months ago I didn't know that PHP uh, could do. Okay. So global functions, define functions that are available anywhere in your system via that uh, prepend file directive. And if you want to see an example of that, go to the uh, SPASI global ray repo. Okay. Let's talk about uh, another cool thing. Uh, and this is something that um, was influenced by a technology in another ecosystem, and that is called LiveWire. LiveWire is a Laravel-specific package, but the idea can be stolen. It can, the idea can be used in, uh, in any language or any framework. And what LiveWire gives you is the ability to build a dynamic front-end without you having coding JavaScript. So you can make interactive components, but you don't need to write the JavaScript or an API for that yourself. How it works is that it uh, will uh, render HTML and it will transfer that over the wire and replace the HTML that's currently there, but in a way that you don't have to bother about this. Now, this is uh, not something that, uh, that I invented. LifeWire uh, was created by a smart guy named Caleb Porzio, and he was inspired by a, a nice feature in the, uh, in the Elixir ecosystem called Phoenix Live View. So I already spoiled this a little bit. Um, if you want to, in a traditional way, make some interactivity on a page, you'll probably write some JavaScript and maybe yeah, work with some JSON responses to see what the JavaScript should display. But instead, we are going to use HTML and do that over the wire. So I have a, a little example of that as well. So let's close this up in a proper way. I don't need this anymore. And let's open up the browser here. Um, I should have... Even though it's, it's locally, for some reason, this test domain needs to have a connection. I hope that this will work. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's maybe try this one. Sorry for the little delay here. I'm pretty sure we can get this solved in some way. Is that Safari hanging now? Let's, let's try running it again. So, fantastic functions, test count, no. Okay, maybe Valet is a little bit confused. So let's try to restart that. And otherwise, I have to skip this part, which I don't want to do. Ah, restarting DNS mask, that's already good. Seems like it's a little bit slow now. Now, while we wait, unless this is going fast, I'm going to do something else. Ah, here, we are there. Nice. Let's refresh. Yeah, okay, cool. Sorry for the wait. Okay, so we have uh, a very simple uh, interface here, and <laughs> I have two very simple buttons I can... Uh, I think I can imagine that you know what they do. So this one does the counter plus one, and this one does the counter uh, minus one. And um, 
might not be obvious, but we're not doing like a full page refresh here. Uh, there's nothing uh, being, uh, yeah, there's no blue line here. Um, but instead, the server re-renders the, the HTML and LiveWire replaces this. Now, let me uh, open up the uh, browser tools and let me show you that. So if I do a plus one here, then you can see in the response that we just get a little bit of HTML back and that is being replaced uh, there. That's like the core of LiveWire. Now let's take a look what you need to do as a developer uh, to enable this. And I know this is a very simple example. We're going to show you a uh, more advanced example after this. So let's go to our, uh, let's see to our route file. So what are we going to render when we go to the uh, count route? We are going to render a view here. And that view, let me put it side by side. We have here counting with LiveWire, and then we have this LiveWire component here. And that uh, component, uh, it has two parts. It has a PHP class that's backing it, and it also has a view part where the view is being rendered. Now let's start with the view here. So the view here is the value of the counter. And then you can see here that I just have a little bit of state here, named a variable named count. Um, I have two buttons here. And there's some special markup on that called wire click and a message add. And we also have a wire click message subtract. Now, let's go to the uh, component uh, side of, uh, of this. So this is the um, PHP class that is backing that component. We have a little bit of state. Count is one, which is displayed the first time. And you can see that uh, if that add is executed here, and that add will be executed when I push the, the, this button here, then that function with that name will be will be executed, and then we are going to increase the counter, and because we changed a little bit of state, the uh, component will re-render itself, and re-rendering itself is just rendering that view again. So it's a little bit the same as, um, if you're familiar with that, with uh, Vue.js components or React components, but then implemented in, in PHP. So this is all you need to do to get this little bit of interactivity. Now, um, in itself, a counter is not the most uh, sexy thing uh, to show. So I made another uh, slightly more advanced example, namely a search. So what you can do here is we have a, a database with quotes. I only have seeded data, so nothing uh, to... Uh, too inspiring. Oh, is my database empty? Wait, let me fix that as well. Like that. Quote. Ah, yeah, we have real quotes here. Nice. Okay, so I can. Is quality uh, rather than quantity that matters? Uh, which quotes do I have in here? We have another th other things here. So I can really search things here, and those quotes, they are coming uh, from the database. Now, let's see what you need to do as a developer to make something like that. So in a traditional way, you probably would have like a JavaScript component and then maybe an API endpoint where uh, you pass on the query and you, you fetch your results back. Now, let's see how we do that here. So we are going to uh, the search view. So search here is searching with LiveWire and then this LiveWire search component. And again, this one has uh, two, um, two parts, a view and a PHP class. Let's go to the view uh, part first. So here we have that little input here. And there's also a special um, LiveWire directive uh, on it as well, namely model. And we also have a small directive on that called dbounce. And this is bound to searching for, which is a variable that is on the backing PHP class. Let's take a look at that first. 
So here we have that searching for on the, uh, on the component. So whenever I type something here, what, whatever I type here will be passed on to this variable, and we're only going to do it every 200 milliseconds, not every time that I type, just to uh, get a little bit of load from, from the server. So whenever a little bit of state changes in a live wire component, it will get re-rendered. So we are going to call the render function, and in that render function, we have another function that we called, namely, get quotes. And what we are going to do here is use this, uh, use this model and use our query that is in the search for to get the quotes that yeah, contain what we are looking for. We are going to give those quotes to, uh, to uh, the search view. And here you can see that if there are counts found, then we're just going to loop over them and we are going to uh, render this list. So that, uh, that just works. And I think that as a PHP developer, I think everybody is capable of, uh, of uh, developing this. And it's very nice that you don't need to write any JavaScript of your own about this. Now, let me show you a real-world example uh, for this. Uh, I have this running on my own blog. If the uh, hotel Wi-Fi works, I can show you that. Otherwise, I might need to switch to my own phone, like that. Uh, it's still a little bit slow, but maybe we can show it off. So there's search functionality here. And maybe let's search for a thing called pest, and then we get every blog post that, uh, that I've written uh, about pests. So this is something that really works. And it's not something that only I believe in. Um, you might uh, know this, uh, this little website called GitHub, and they use this technique all over the place. I don't know if you've, if you've ever noticed that, that if you uh, have loaded something and you go to uh, other pages, you don't see like a full page refresh uh, in there. Let's see what, uh, what happens there. So if I go to uh, network, um, maybe close this, this up, and if I go to something here, then you can see that they also just pass HTML over the wire and they have some JavaScript set up to only make replacements of the things uh, that are updated. So this idea is, is not, not new. Um, but using LiveWire, it's very easy to use this in a uh, Laravel application. And it's something that's becoming big in the, in the Laravel community. Okay, let's go back here and maybe check the time. Okay, so LiveWire, server rendered partials, we use HTML over the wire. It is really production ready. There are already big sites that are using this. It's Laravel specific, but the idea can be ported to everywhere uh, that you want. And if you want to know more information, because I've only scratched the surface about the abilities of Livewire, go to laravellivewire.com. Okay, let's move on to another subject called PEST. Um, and this is something that I only want to give you like a short introduction about because tomorrow the creator of PEST will uh, give you like the uh, full explanation of it. But I want to, uh, to touch it. So in uh, the PHP world, PHP unit is like the de facto test runner. I think if uh, you've learned how to write tests, then probably you will have used um, PHP unit. It's, it's rock solid. And it itself is inspired by something outside of the PHP community. Uh, it is inspired by Smalltalk's S unit. And S unit spawns yeah, uh, a whole uh, bunch of X unit uh, kind of uh, test runners. So PEST is a, is a newish kind of test runner. It isn't um, completely built from scratch. It is built upon PHP unit, and that is a very good thing because every uh, valid PHP unit test is also a valid PEST test. And in fact, uh, if you want to adopt PEST, you could just install it, 
your current PHP tests would continue running, and you can add some PEST style tests if you wanted to. What is the big difference between PEST and PHP unit uh, in my mind? That is that uh, PEST really focus on the developer experience. It really tries to make things as small and as easy and as pleasant to use as possible. Now, I don't want to start like a PHP unit and PEST war. I think both approaches are valid. It, it, um, it's something that um, you should choose what m matches your personal personality uh, a little bit. Now, PEST um, is not a original idea uh, by Nuno. He got inspired by Jest. And you will see that the format of testing very much um, looks like a Jest test. So let's uh, demo this as well. So let me go to my project here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And if everything is good, we have a little test here. We're going to, uh, this is written in PHP unit. So here we are going to yeah, set up some things in the database, some quotes, and then we have a test to see uh, if what we are searching for is actually uh, what we expect. And we are using a data provider here with some, uh, with some cases. Uh, now, I'm not going to go over uh, all the nitty and gritty details, but I want to show you how you could convert this manually to a, uh, to a PEST test. So I'm just going to copy this so we can just reference it a little bit. So we're going to call this new quote test. And in new quote test, we're just going to start from scratch. Now, in PHP unit, everything that you want to uh, execute for every function, uh, for every test in your file, you do in setup function. But in PHP unit, you don't need to, uh, or in PEST, you don't need to do that. In that case, we have a before each function, which accepts a callable. And here we can do uh, that stuff. And the advantage here is that you can't forget to, uh, to call parent setup because that basically just doesn't exist. Now let's go here to the uh, to the function body, or I j I'll just copy this all. Okay, this is our test. Now in um, PEST, you are not working in a class, so how can you define a test? You can do that with the it function. Then you give it the name of your uh, your test. It can be searched. And this is already another nice thing. You don't have to um, uh, use underscores here because you're basically just passing a string. Let's just add a function here. And we can uh, put the, uh, the test itself there. So let's move the body in there. And um, we also accept these ones from the data set. So we are going to accept this one here. And then we can just plainly remove this. Let's maybe make it a little bit wider. So this is what we end up with. And then the last thing that we need to do is uh, yeah, make sure that the data provider works. So I'm just going to copy here what the data provider would return here in a separate function. And how you do this in PEST is laughably easy. You just give it width and that results. And this is the same test. And if I have done everything correctly, then this will actually uh, also run. I haven't set this up. It was working before, so let's do it manually like that. It can be searched. And our test is green. Uh, we have four tests uh, here because of the data set. And you can see that we get uh, a nice uh, test result here that mentions what was in the, uh, the data provider. Um, now, I know that code line isn't everything, but you can see that for the PHP unit test, we have uh, 45 lines of code. And here, we have 20 lines of code for the same amount of tests. Now, um, you might wonder, how is the IDE support for all the magic 
uh, that, that PEST provides. Well, the IDE support is pretty amazing. Uh, there is a very smart guy called uh, Oliver Niebrew, which uh, created a uh, extension for in, uh, in PHP Storm, which makes PHP Storm understand all of the magic of, uh, of PEST. For instance, in a PEST file, you can't have like tests with the same name. So if you try to do that, um, let's do it like this. It can be searched. You can see that we already get like a nice error here. PEST test names must be unique in the file. Uh, you can also see that uh, uh, PHP Storm recognized that this is a test. So you can uh, run this as well. So this, this all works um, if you are um, you can also search uh, for these uh, for these tests. So can be searched. You can see that the PHP unit or oh, that PHP Storm uh, picks up on that as well. Um, there is also another way of writing uh, assertions in PHP in in PEST, which in my uh, opinion is much more natural. You can just write uh, expect like that. Uh, and we expect these our results to be the results that we expected. And this has a very rich API, which probably Nuno will tell you about uh, a little bit more tomorrow. Now, there's one more thing that I want to show you uh, with PEST. And that is how uh, you can uh, create custom expectations. Because that's also something that I think the um, the best extension of uh, PHP Storm does in a very very fancy way. So imagine that I want to have um, a sort of expectation that tests if uh, the string that I pass is uh, uh, is uppercased. So expect this to be uppercased. And that should pass. Okay, how do we do that? Well, in the PEST file, you can add a custom expectation here, expect. And we're going to extend it. And we are going to extend it with uh, to be uppercased. It accepts a callable here. And the value that you pass to uh, expect um, will be in this value. So this value, and we are going to expect that this value is to be string to upper this value, and otherwise it will fail. So with this out of the way, expect this. And you can see here, and this is like the magical thing. Um, we already get auto-completion for a function that we added here ourselves. Uh, so if I do something else here, maybe uh, PHP day or something, and I expect uh, to uh, be uppercased, you can see that PHP Storm already knows that that function, uh, that that function exists. Okay, let's maybe prove that it actually works. So if I run this test, and I need to do this manually. Oh, not expected results, but can be searched. You can see that it passes. And if I don't do this uppercase, then it fails because, yeah, this is, uh, this is a problem. Now, how does PHP Storm know um, that that function exists dynamically? Well, if we go and take a look in the vendor directory, then we see that the uh, PEST extension does something uh, very smart, I think. Um, they write a file called expectation here, and they add like a dog block here like that says, hey, there is a function on, uh, on this class here. And just by having this file in your vendor directory um, will um, we'll make PHP Storm understand that that function is available and you can get auto-completion for that. So this is like a nice example um, yeah, how the magic of uh, PEST can be understood. Okay, let's go back to 
the, uh, to the slides. So PEST, I think, is a wonderful way of uh, writing tests. It really matches with my personality. I really like uh, simple and easy things, and things that are uh, um, optimized for readability. Um, we have a cool expectation API there that can be extended. There is code coverage uh, that comes out of the box. There is a thing called higher order tests, which I'm sure that Nuno will touch uh, on about. And if you can't wait to uh, get started, pay a visit to the PEST uh, 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 home, home page. So I'm running a little bit out of time. There is also another thing that I wanted to show you that Nuno has created, and that is a thing called Termwind which is also in the idea that you can be influenced by things outside of the community. Uh, there's this uh, wonderful way of styling things, uh, which is called uh, Tailwind. And Nuno ported it so that you can style things in uh, the terminal itself. But that's maybe something for, uh, to talk about at another conference, but uh, definitely check out that, uh, that repository there. Now, I've already seen like the five-minute um, uh, warning, so I need to skip uh, this part of the talk. Um, I wanted to talk about weak maps. If there's any of you who wants to see this part, uh, come find me at the conference and we'll sit outside, have a good coffee or something, and I'll, uh, I'll still show you. So, but now we have to skip uh, over this. So, in closing, I think that PHP is a fantastic language, but we shouldn't rest on our laurels uh, too hard. We need to keep an open mind, and we need to look at other ecosystems, and we need to be inspired by that and take the best parts and keep on repeating that so that the PHP and its ecosystem uh, remain um, yeah, a good place to be for, uh, for the coming years. Now, before I close down, wait, I'll go back. You won't take a picture? You can take a picture. <laughs> okay. Okay, there's one more uh, little thing that uh, I wanted to tell you. Um, you saw me using that little uh, Ray application. Um, its homepage is myray.app. It's a dedicated window for, uh, for output. Uh, it can also measure performance. It can show you the mails that your application is sending, the queries that it is sending. It is a nice little debugging helper. I think of it as something in between uh, die and debug, uh, debugging and, and xdebug, something that fits in the middle. And yeah, to thank you all for listening, um, uh, I want to give you like a free license uh, for that. So you can use this coupon code to get like a free license. Uh, I would appreciate if you don't tweet this out. This is just <laughs> just for you. Uh, there is like a limited amount uh, there. If it runs out, uh, just uh, hit me up uh, or walk walk on by me and ask me uh, for another code, and you also get like a free uh, license. So with that out of the way, uh, I want to thank you for your attention and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks.